Hey what's happening guys hope you all are doing well this is Tito back with another video and today in this video I'm going to show you how to install the Lineage OS 15.1 on Redmi Note 3 and this is still unofficial this is not yet official I don't know why and when it will be official so let's press the unofficial build and test it how is it so without further any more delay let's make it happen so first we need to download the ROM and G apps from this XDA thread. All the important links will be given in the description box below, so do not worry. Before proceeding, make sure you have officially unlocked bootloader, PWRP recovery installed, and you are doing it on your own risk. So, as you can see, I am on Nitrogen OS right now, and I have downloaded the ROM and G apps from my phone. So, let's boot the phone into PWRP recovery. I am using official twrp 3.2.1/0 over here. So now hit wipe. Now select advanced wipe. Check cache, Dalvik cache, system and data. Once done, now swipe to wipe. Once that's done, go back, go back, hit install. Locate the ROM and gapps file, select them and swipe to confirm flash. Once that's done, just hit reboot system and wait for the time being. Here is the boot animation which is pretty similar to Lineage OS 14.1. As we are booted up into the system, let me complete the setup process. Here we have the trebuchet launcher as default launcher. These are the stock apps this ROM comes preloaded with. Have a look if you need to. Except the UC browser and wallpaper app of course. They are there because I am restoring my Google app data backup. Let me install my daily driver launcher over here which is modded pixel launcher. Here is the about section of this ROM if you are into that. As you can see based on Android 8.1. So that's why Lineage is 15.1. With latest January 5th 2018 security patch. Here is the kernel name. I am not able to understand which one is it. So if you guys know, let me know in the comment section down below. In gestures, we have the double tap the power button to launch camera option. Here we have the status bar customization options. From here, you can disable or enable status bar icons like headset or something. And we have the slider finger on the status bar to increase or decrease the brightness feature over here which is pretty cool. Ok so now let's move to buttons. From here you can customize power button, volume buttons, home button, menu button and back button. To turn on the advanced power menu you need to turn on developer options first, do note that. So now let's jump into notifications. From here you can hide lock screen notification but at first I could not find out heads up disabling option here even by searching for it. But luckily later I find out it's here in quick settings panel. But even tapping and holding on it doesn't get you to any heads up settings. So do note that but it works fine. Somehow in display settings we do not have the UI color changing option yet which is present on Nitrogen OS but we do have double tap to sleep here which works fine like this. Here is the sound and vibration settings if you are into that. Here is an example of Geo4G Volte calling working, but note that there is no Volte sign in the status bar. Here is a bug that I found. The torch light is a bit wonky sometimes. It does work, but sometimes it just flickers like this.
and here is how the face unlock works in this ROM. Let me set it up first. So as you can see it's not like the immediate unlock thing which is like in Nitrogen OS or any other ROM right now. It just works then you have to swipe manually to unlock the screen. It does not unlock automatically at all. First impressions of the ROM feel super smooth as of now. And all the audio 8.1 features like the transparent quick settings panel and all the toggle animations are present here. So let me take a quick picture over here and show you guys the picture quality of it. Here are the benchmarks of this ROM if you are into that. So now let me just open a few apps to show you guys the RAM management of this ROM and in the meantime let's talk what's working over here. So Wi-Fi, 4G Vault E calling, camera, FPC fingerprint scanner etc are working fine and only bugs over here are the torch bug and Vault E video calling bug. That's it. So conclusion, if you can live with the two bugs I mentioned, you are good to flash this ROM as of now. But I am yet to test the battery life. I will post the screenshot of battery stats on Twitter once I test it out. So do follow me there. So that wraps up this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the big thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel right here if you love my work. This is Tito from KTN Tech signing off. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye now.